Edward Wadi Said, Arabic, Edward D. Sid Wedi Said, Edward Wad Said, the 1st of November 1935 to the 25th of September 2003, was a professor of literature at Columbia University, a public intellectual, and a founder of the academic field of postcolonial studies. A Palestinian American born in Mandatory Palestine, he was a citizen of the United States by way of his father, a U.S. Army veteran. Educated in the Western canon, at British and American schools, Said applied his education and bicultural perspective to illuminating the gaps of cultural and political understanding between the Western world and the Eastern world, especially about the Israeli Palestinian conflict in the Middle East. His principal influences were Antonio Gramsci, Franz Fanon, Aimé Césaire, Michel Foucault, and Theodore Adorno. As a cultural critic, Said is known for the book Orientalism, 1978, a critique of the cultural representations that are the Bases of Orientalism how the Western world perceives the Orient. Said's model of textual analysis transformed the academic discourse of researchers in literary theory, literary criticism, and Middle Eastern studies how academics examine, describe, and define the cultures being studied. As a foundational text, Orientalism was controversial among scholars of Oriental studies, philosophy, and literature. As a public intellectual, Said was a controversial member of the Palestinian National Council, because he publicly criticized Israel and the Arab countries, especially the political and cultural policies of Muslim regimes who acted against the national interests of their peoples. Said advocated the establishment of a Palestinian state to ensure equal political and human rights for the Palestinians in Israel, including the right of return to the homeland. He defined his oppositional relation with the status quo as the remit of the public intellectual who has to sift, to judge, to criticize, to choose, so that choice and agency return to the individual man and woman. In 1999, with his friend Daniel Barenboim, Said Co founded the West Eastern Divan Orchestra, based in Seville, which comprises young Israeli, Palestinian, and Arab musicians. Besides being an academic, Said was also an accomplished pianist, and, with Barenboim, co authored the book Parallels and Paradoxes Explorations in Music and Society, 2002, a compilation of their conversations about music. Said died of leukemia on 25 September 2003. Topic. Life and career Topic. Early life Edward Wadi Said was born on 1 November 1935, to Hilda Said and Wadi Said, a businessman in Jerusalem, then part of British-governed Mandatory Palestine 1920 Wadi Said was a Palestinian man who soldiered in the U.S. Army component of the American Expeditionary Forces 1917-19, commanded by General John J. Pershing, in the First World War 1914-18. Afterwards, that wartime military service earned American citizenship to Said Per and his family. Edward's mother, Hilda Said was born Lebanese and raised in Nazareth, Ottoman Empire. In 1919, in partnership with a cousin, Wadi Said established a stationary business in Cairo. Like her husband, Hilda Said was an Arab Christian, and, although the Said family practiced the Jerusalemite variety of Greek Orthodox Christianity, Edward was agnostic. Moreover, his sister Rosemary Said Zalin also pursued an academic career. Topic. Education Said lived his boyhood between the worlds of Cairo and Jerusalem. In 1947, he attended St. George's School, Jerusalem, a British school of stern Anglican Christian caste. About being there, Said said, With an unexceptionally Arab family name like Said, Connected to an improbably British first name my mother much admired Edward VIII the Prince of Wales in 1935, the year of my birth I was an uncomfortably anomalous student all through my early years, a Palestinian going to school in Egypt, with an English first name, an American passport, and no certain identity, at all. To make matters worse, Arabic, my native language, and English, my school language, were inextricably mixed, I have never known which was my first language, and have felt fully at home in neither, although I dream in both. Every time I speak an English sentence, I find myself echoing it in Arabic, and vice versa. 
By the late 1940s, Edwards' schooling included the Egyptian branch of Victoria College, Alexandria VC, where classmates included King Hussein of Jordan, and the Egyptian, Syrian, Jordanian, and Saudi Arabian boys whose academic careers would progress to their becoming ministers, prime ministers, and leading businessmen in their respective countries. In that colonial time and place, the function of a British colonial school, such as VC, was to educate selections of young men from the Arab and Levantine ruling classes, to become the anglicised post-colonial administrators who would rule their countries, upon British decolonization. About Victoria College, Edward Said The moment one became a student at Victoria College, one was given the student handbook, a series of regulations governing every aspect of school life the kind of uniform we were to wear, what equipment was needed for sports, the dates of school holidays, bus schedules, and so on. But the school's first rule, emblazoned on the opening page of the handbook, read, English is the language of the school, students caught speaking any other language will be punished. Yet, there were no native speakers of English among the students. Whereas the masters were all British, we were a motley crew of Arabs of various kinds, Armenians, Greeks, Italians, Jews, and Turks, each of whom had a native language that the school had explicitly outlawed. Yet all, or nearly all, of us spoke Arabic. Many spoke Arabic and French. And so we were able to take refuge in a common language, in defiance of what we perceived as an unjust colonial structure. In 1951, Victoria College expelled Edward, who had proved a troublesome boy, despite being a student of great intelligence and much academic achievement. He then attended Northfield Mount Hermon School, Massachusetts, a socially alite, college prep boarding school where he lived a difficult year of social alienation. Nonetheless, the student Edward excelled, and achieved the rank of either first valedictorian or second salutatorian in a class of 160 students. In retrospect, being sent far from the Middle East Egypt, he viewed as a parental decision much influenced by the prospects of deracinated people, like us the Palestinians, being so uncertain that it would be best to send me as far away as possible. The realities of peripatetic life of interwoven cultures, of feeling out of place, and of homesickness—so affected the schoolboy Edward that themes of dissonance feature in the work and worldview of the academic said. At school's end, he had become Edward W. Said. A polyglot intellectual fluent in English, French, and Arabic who had earned a Bachelor of Arts 1957 degree at Princeton University, and Master of Arts 1960 and Doctor of Philosophy 1964 degrees in English literature from Harvard University. Topic. Career In 1963, Said joined Columbia University, as a member of the English and Comparative Literature faculties, where he taught and worked until 2003. In 1974, he was visiting professor of comparative literature at Harvard. During the 1975 76 period, he was a fellow of the Center for Advanced Study in Behavioral Science, at Stanford University. In 1977, he became the Par Professor of English and Comparative Literature at Columbia University, and subsequently was the Old Dominion Foundation Professor in the Humanities, and in 1979 was Visiting Professor of Humanities at Johns Hopkins University, said also worked as a visiting professor at Yale University, and lectured at other universities. Said lectured at more than 200 universities in North America, Europe, and the Middle East. In 1992, Said was promoted to Professor, the highest rank academic job at Columbia University. Editorially, Professor Edward Said served as president of the Modern Language Association, as editor of the Arab Studies Quarterly in the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, was on the executive board of International Pen, and was a member of the American Academy of Arts and Letters, the Royal Society of Literature, the Council of Foreign Relations, the American Philosophical Society. In 1993, Said presented the BBC's annual Wreath Lectures, a six-lecture series titled Representation of the Intellectual, wherein he examined the role of the public intellectual in contemporary society, which the BBC published in 2011. Topic. Literary production Said's first published book, Joseph Conrad and the Fiction of Autobiography 1966, was an expansion of the doctoral dissertation he presented to earn the Ph.D. degree. Moreover, in Edward Said, Criticism and Society 2010, Abdurrahman Hussein said that Conrad's novella Heart of Darkness 1899 was 
foundational to Said's entire career and project. Afterwards, Said redacted ideas gleaned from the works of the 17th century philosopher Giambattista Vico, and other intellectuals, in the book Beginnings, Intention and Method, 1974, about the theoretical basis of literary criticism. Said's later works include The World, The Text, and The Critic 1983, Nationalism, Colonialism, and Literature, Yates and Decolonization 1988, Culture and Imperialism 1993, Representations of the Intellectual, The 1993 Wreath Lectures 1994, Humanism and Democratic Criticism 2004, and On Late Style 2006. Topic. Orientalism. Said became an established cultural critic with the book Orientalism 1978, a critique description and analyses of Orientalism as the source of the false cultural representations with which the Western world perceives the Middle East—the narratives of how the West sees the East. The thesis of Orientalism proposes the existence of a "...subtle and persistent Eurocentric prejudice against Arabo-Islamic peoples and their culture." which originates from Western culture's long tradition of false, romanticized images of Asia, in general, and the Middle East, in particular. That such cultural representations have served, and continue to serve, as implicit justifications for the colonial and imperial ambitions of the European powers and of the U.S. likewise, said denounced the political and the cultural malpractices of the regimes of the ruling Arab elites who have internalized the false and romanticized representations of Arabic culture that were created by Anglo-American Orientalists. So far as the United States seems to be concerned, it is only a slight overstatement to say that Muslims and Arabs are essentially seen as either oil suppliers or potential terrorists. Very little of the detail, the human density, the passion of Arab Muslim life has entered the awareness of even those people whose profession it is to report the Arab world. What we have, instead, is a series of crude, essentialized caricatures of the Islamic world, presented in such a way as to make that world vulnerable to military aggression. Orientalism proposed that much Western study of Islamic civilization was political intellectualism, meant for the self-affirmation of European identity, rather than objective academic study. Thus, the academic field of Oriental studies functioned as a practical method of cultural discrimination and imperialist domination. That is to say, the Western Orientalist knows more about the Orient than do the Orientals, that the cultural representations of the Eastern world that Orientalism pervades are intellectually suspect, and cannot be accepted as faithful, true, and accurate representations of the peoples and things of the Orient, that the history of European colonial rule and political domination of Asian civilizations, distorts the writing of even the most knowledgeable, well-meaning, and culturally sympathetic Orientalist. I doubt if it is controversial, for example, to say that an Englishman in India, or Egypt, in the later 19th century, took an interest in those countries, which was never far from their status, in his mind, as British colonies. To say this may seem quite different from saying that all academic knowledge about India and Egypt is somehow tinged and impressed with, violated by, the gross political fact—and yet that is what I am saying in this study of Orientalism that since antiquity, Western art has misrepresented the Orient with stereotypes, in the tragedy The Persians 472 BCE, by Aeschylus, the Greek protagonist falls, because he misperceived the true nature of the Orient. That the European political domination of Asia has biased even the most outwardly objective Western texts about the Orient, to a degree unrecognized by the Western scholars who appropriated for themselves the production of cultural knowledge, the academic work of studying, exploring, and interpreting the languages, histories, and peoples of Asia. Therefore, Orientalist scholarship implies that the colonial subaltern the colonized people were incapable of thinking, acting, or speaking for themselves, thus are incapable of writing their own national histories. In such imperial circumstances, the Orientalist scholars of the West wrote the history of the Orient, and so constructed the modern, cultural identities of Asia, from the perspective that the West is the cultural standard to emulate, the norm from which the exotic and inscrutable Orientals deviate. The thesis of Orientalism concluded that the West's knowledge of the Orient depicts the cultures of the Eastern world as an irrational, weak, and feminized non European other, which is the opposite of the West's representations of Western cultures as a rational, strong, and masculine polity. That such an artificial binary relation originates from the European psychological need to create a difference 
of inequality, between the West and the East, which inequality originates from the immutable cultural essences innate to the peoples of the Oriental world. Topic. Criticism of Orientalism Orientalism provoked much professional and personal criticism for said among academics. Traditional Orientalists, such as Albert Harani, Robert Graham Irwin, Nikki Keddy, Bernard Lewis, and Kanan Machia, suffered negative consequences, because Orientalism affected public perception of their intellectual integrity and the quality of their Orientalist scholarship. The historian Keddie said that Said's critical work about the field of Orientalism had caused, in their academic disciplines, some unfortunate consequences. I think that there has been a tendency in the Middle East studies field to adopt the word Orientalism as a generalized swear word, essentially referring to people who take the wrong position on the Arab-Israeli dispute, or to people who are judged too conservative. It has nothing to do with whether they are good or not good in their disciplines. So, Orientalism, for many people, is a word that substitutes for thought, and enables people to dismiss certain scholars and their works. I think that is too bad. It may not have been what Edward Said meant, at all, but the term has become a kind of slogan. In Orientalism, Said described Bernard Lewis, the Anglo-American Orientalist, as a perfect exemplification of an establishment orientalist whose work purports to be objective, liberal scholarship, but is, in reality, very close to being propaganda against his subject material. Lewis responded with a harsh critique of Orientalism accusing said of politicizing the scientific study of the Middle East and Arabic studies in particular, neglecting to critique the scholarly findings of the Orientalists, and giving free reign. To his biases, Said retorted that in The Muslim Discovery of Europe 1982, Lewis responded to his thesis with the claim that the Western quest for knowledge about other societies was unique in its display of disinterested curiosity, which Muslims did not reciprocate towards Europe. Lewis was saying that, "...knowledge about Europe was the only acceptable criterion for true knowledge." The appearance of academic impartiality was part of Lewis' role as an academic authority for zealous anti-Islamic, anti-Arab, Zionist, and Cold War crusades." Moreover, in the afterword to the 1995 edition of the book, Said replied to Lewis' criticisms of the first edition of Orientalism 1978. <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence of Orientalism In the Academy, Orientalism became a foundational text of the field of post-colonial studies, for what the British intellectual Terry Eagleton said is the book's central truth that demeaning images of the East, and imperialist incursions into its terrain, have historically gone hand in hand. Said's friends and foes acknowledged the transformative influence of Orientalism upon scholarship in the humanities. Critics said that the thesis is an intellectually limiting influence upon scholars, whilst supporters said that the thesis is intellectually liberating. The fields of post colonial and cultural studies attempt to explain the post colonial world, its peoples, and their discontents for which the techniques of investigation and efficacy in Orientalism, proved especially applicable in Middle Eastern studies, as such, the investigation and analysis said applied in Orientalism proved especially practical in literary criticism and cultural studies, such as the post-colonial histories of India by Gyan Prakash, Nicholas Dirks and Ronald Inden, modern Cambodia by Simon Springer, and the literary theories of Homi K. Baba, Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak and Hamid Dabashi Iran, A People Interrupted, 2006. In Eastern Europe, Malika Bakak Hayden developed the concept of nesting Orientalisms 1992, derived from the ideas of the historian Larry Wolf inventing Eastern Europe, the map of civilization on the mind of the Enlightenment, 1994 and Said's ideas in Orientalism 1978. The Bulgarian historian Maria Todorova imagining the Balkans, 1997 presented the ethnologic concept of nesting Balkanisms Ethnologia Balkanica, 1997, which is derived from Malika Bakak Hayden's concept of nesting Orientalisms, in the impact of "...biblical Orientalism." In late 19th and early 20th century Palestine 2014, the historian Lorenzo Camel, presented the concept of "...biblical Orientalism." with an historical analysis of the simplifications of the complex, local Palestinian reality, which occurred from the 1830s until the early 20th century. 
Kamel said that the selective usage and simplification of religion, in approaching the place known as the Holy Land, created a view that, as a place, the Holy Land has no human history other than as the place where Bible stories occurred, rather than as Palestine, a country inhabited by many peoples. The post-colonial discourse presented in Orientalism, also influenced post-colonial theology and post-colonial biblical criticism, by which method the analytical reader approaches a scripture from the perspective of a colonial reader. See, the Bible and Zionism, Invented Traditions, Archaeology and Post-Colonialism in Palestine Israel 2007. Another book in this area is Postcolonial Theory 1998, by Leela Gandhi, explains postcolonialism to how it can be applied to the wider philosophical and intellectual context of history. <laughs> Politics In 1967, consequent to the Six-Day War 5 to 10 June 1967, the academic Edward Said became a public intellectual when he acted politically to counter the stereotyped misrepresentations factual, historical, cultural with which the U.S. news media explained the Arab-Israeli wars, reportage divorced from the historical realities of the Middle East, in general, and Palestine and Israel, in particular. To address, explain, and correct such Orientalism, said published. The Arab Portrayed, 1968, a descriptive essay about images of the Arab that are meant to evade specific discussion of the historical and cultural realities of the peoples Jews, Christians, Muslims who are the Middle East, featured in journalism print, photograph, television and some types of scholarship specialist journals, in the essay, Zionism from the Standpoint of Its Victims. 1979, said argued in favor of the political legitimacy and philosophic authenticity of the Zionist claims and right to a Jewish homeland, and for the inherent right of national self-determination of the Palestinian people. Said's books about Israel and Palestine include The Question of Palestine 1979, The Politics of Dispossession 1994, and The End of the Peace Process 2000. Topic. Palestinian National Council. From 1977 until 1991, Said was an independent member of the Palestinian National Council In 1988, he was a proponent of the two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict 1948, and voted for the establishment of the State of Palestine at a meeting of the PNC in Algiers. In 1993, Said quit his membership to the Palestinian National Council, to protest the internal politics that led to the signing of the Oslo Accords Declaration of Principles on Interim Self-Government Arrangements, 1993, which he thought had unacceptable terms, and because the terms had been rejected by the Madrid Conference of 1991. Said disliked the Oslo Accords for not producing an independent state of Palestine, and because they were politically inferior to a plan that Yasser Arafat had rejected, a plan said had presented to Arafat on behalf of the U.S. government in the late 1970s. Especially troublesome to said was his belief that Yasser Arafat had betrayed the right of return of the Palestinian refugees to their houses and properties in the Green Line territories of pre-1967 Israel, and that Arafat ignored the growing political threat of the Israeli settlements in the occupied territories that had been established since the conquest of Palestine in 1967. In 1995, in response to Said's political criticisms, the Palestinian Authority PA banned the sale of Said's books. However, the PA lifted the book ban when Said publicly praised Yasser Arafat for rejecting Prime Minister Ehud Barak's offers at the Middle East Peace Summit at Camp David 2000 in the U.S. In the mid 1990s, Said wrote the foreword to the history book Jewish History, Jewish Religion, The Weight of 3,000 Years 1994, by Israel Shahak, about Jewish fundamentalism, which presents presents the cultural proposition that Israel's mistreatment of the Palestinians is rooted in a Judaic requirement of permission for Jews to commit crimes, including murder, against Gentiles non -Jews. In his foreword, Said said that Jewish history, Jewish religion is, "...nothing less than a concise history of classic and modern Judaism, insofar as these are relevant to the understanding of modern Israel." and praised the historian Shahak for describing contemporary Israel as a nation subsumed in a Judeo-Nazi cultural ambiance that allowed the dehumanization of the Palestinian other. In all my works, I remained fundamentally critical of a gloating and uncritical nationalism. 
My view of Palestine, remains the same today. I expressed all sorts of reservations about the insouciant nativism, and militant militarism of the nationalist consensus. I suggested, instead, a critical look at the Arab environment, Palestinian history, and the Israeli realities, with the explicit conclusion that only a negotiated settlement, between the two communities of suffering, Arab and Jewish, would provide respite from the unending war. In 1998, Said Made in Search of Palestine 1998, a BBC documentary film about Palestine past and present. In the company of his son, Wadi, Said revisited the places of his boyhood, and confronted injustices meted out to ordinary Palestinians in the contemporary West Bank. Despite the social and cultural prestige usual to BBC cinema products in the U.S., the documentary was never broadcast by any American television company. In 1999, the American Monthly Commentary cited ledgers kept at the Land Registry Office in Jerusalem during the mandatory period as background for his boyhood recollections. In Palestine On 3 July 2000, whilst touring the Middle East with his son, Wadi, Edward Said was photographed throwing a stone across the Blue Line Lebanese-Israel border, which image elicited much political criticism about his action demonstrating an inherent, personal sympathy with terrorism, and, in Commentary magazine, the journalist Edward Alexander labelled Said as the professor of terror for aggression against Israel. Said explained the stone throwing as a two-fold action, personal and political, a man-to-man -man contest of skill, between a father and his son, and an Arab man's gesture of joy at the end of the Israeli occupation of southern Lebanon 1985 It was a pebble, there was nobody there. The guardhouse was at least half a mile away. Despite having denied that he aimed the stone at an Israeli guardhouse, the Beirut newspaper as Safir the ambassador reported that a Lebanese local resident reported that Professor Said was at less than 10 meters ca. 30 feet. Distance from the Israeli Defense Force IDF soldiers manning the two-story guardhouse, when Said aimed and threw the stone over the border fence, the stone's projectile path was thwarted when it struck the barbed wire atop the border fence. Nonetheless, in the U.S., despite a political fracas by right-wing students at Columbia University and the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith International Sons of the Covenant, the university provost published a five-page letter defending Professor Said's action as an academic's freedom of expression. To my knowledge, the stone was directed at no one, no law was broken, no indictment was made, no criminal or civil action has been taken against Professor Said. Nevertheless, said endured political repercussions, such as the cancellation of an invitation to give a lecture to the Freud Society, in Austria, in February 2001. The president of the Freud Society justified withdrawing the invitation by explaining to said that, the political situation in the Middle East, and its consequences, had rendered an accusation of antisemitism a very serious matter, and that any such accusation, has become more dangerous. In the politics of Austria, thus, the Freud Society cancelled their invitation to said in order to avoid an internal clash of opinions about him that might ideologically divide the Freud Society. In Culture and Resistance, Conversations with Edward Said, 2003, said likened his political situation to the situation that Noam Chomsky has perdered as a public intellectual. It's very similar to his. He's a well known, great linguist. He's been celebrated and honored for that, but he's also vilified as an anti-Semite and as a Hitler worshipper. For anyone to deny the horrendous experience of anti-Semitism and the Holocaust is unacceptable. We don't want anybody's history of suffering to go unrecorded and unacknowledged. On the other hand, there's a great difference, between acknowledging Jewish oppression and using that as a cover for the oppression of another people. Topic. Criticism of U.S. foreign policy In the revised edition of Covering Islam, How the Media and the Experts Determine How We See the Rest of the World 1997, said criticized the Orientalist bias of the Western news media's reportage about the Middle East and Islam, especially the tendency to editorialize speculations about the latest conspiracy to blow up buildings, sabotage commercial airliners, and poison water supplies. 
He criticized the American military involvement in the Kosovo War as an imperial action, and described the Iraq Liberation Act 1998, promulgated during the Clinton administration, as the political license that predisposed the U.S. to invade Iraq in 2003, which was authorized with the Iraq Resolution October 2002, and the continual support of Israel by successive U.S. presidential governments, as actions meant to perpetuate regional political instability in the Middle East. In the event, despite being sick with leukemia, as a public intellectual, said continued criticizing the U.S. invasion of Iraq in mid-2003, and, in the Egyptian Al-Aram Weekly newspaper, in the article, Resources of Hope. The 2nd of April 2003, said said that the U.S. war against Iraq was a politically ill-conceived military enterprise. My strong opinion, though I don't have any proof, in the classical sense of the word, is that they want to change the entire Middle East, and the Arab world, perhaps terminate some countries, destroy the so-called terrorist groups they dislike, and install regimes friendly to the United States. I think this is a dream that has very little basis in reality. The knowledge they have of the Middle East, to judge from the people who advise them, is, to say the least, out of date and widely speculative. I don't think the planning for the post-Saddam, post-war period in Iraq is very sophisticated, and there's very little of it. U.S. Under Secretary of State Mark Grossman and U.S. Under Secretary of Defense Douglas Faith testified in Congress, about a month ago, and seemed to have no figures, and no ideas about what structures they were going to deploy. They had no idea about the use of the Iraqi institutions that exist, although they want to debathize the higher echelons, and keep the rest. The same is true about their views of the Iraqi army. They certainly have no use for the Iraqi opposition that they've been spending many millions of dollars on, and, to the best of my ability to judge, they are going to improvise, of course, the model is Afghanistan. I think they hope that the UN will come in and do something, but, given the recent French and Russian positions, I doubt that that will happen with such simplicity. Topic. Under surveillance. In 2003, Haydar Abdel Shafi, Ibrahim Dakik, Mustafa Bargaudi, and Said established Al Mubadera, the Palestinian National Initiative, headed by Dr. Mustafa Bargaudi, a third party reformist, Democratic Party meant to be an alternative to the usual two party politics of Palestine. As a political party, the ideology of al Mubadera is specifically an alternative to the extremist politics of the Social Democratic Fatah and the Islamist Hamas. Islamic resistance movement. Said's founding of the group, as well as his other international political activities concerning Palestine, were noticed by the U.S. government. In 2006, the anthropologist David Price obtained 147 pages of the 283 page political dossier that the FBI had compiled on said, begun in 1971, four years into his career as a public intellectual active in U.S. politics. Music Besides having been a public intellectual, Edward Said was an accomplished pianist, worked as the music critic for The Nation magazine, and wrote four books about music, Musical Elaborations 1991, Parallels and Paradoxes, Explorations in Music and Society 2002, with Daniel Barenboim as co-author, On Late Style, Music and Literature Against the Grain 2006, and Music at the Limits 2007, in which final tome he spoke of finding musical reflections of his literary and historical ideas in bold compositions and strong performances. Elsewhere in the musical world, the composer Muhammad Farouz acknowledged the deep influence of Edward Said upon his works. Compositionally, Farouz's first symphony thematically alludes to the essay, Homage to a Belly Dancer, 1990, about Tahia Karaoka, the Egyptian terpsichorean, actress, and political militant, and a piano sonata titled Reflections on Exile, 1984, which thematically refers to the emotions inherent to being an exile. In 1999, Edward W. Said and Daniel Barenboim co founded the West Eastern Divan Orchestra, which is composed of young Israeli, Palestinian, and Arab musicians. They also established the Barenboim Said Foundation in Seville, to develop education through music projects. Besides managing the West Eastern Divan Orchestra, the Barenboim Said Foundation assists with the administration of the Academy of Orchestral Studies, the Musical Education in Palestine Project, and the Early Childhood Musical Education Project, in Seville. Honours and awards 
Besides honors, memberships, and postings to prestigious organizations worldwide, Edward Said was awarded some 20 honorary university degrees in the course of his professional life as an academic, critic, and man of letters. Among the honors bestowed to him was the Bowdoin Prize by Harvard University. He twice received the Lionel Trilling Book Award. The first occasion was the inaugural bestowing of said literary award in 1976, for Beginnings, Intention and Method. 1974. He also received the Wellek Prize of the American Comparative Literature Association, and was awarded the inaugural Spinoza Lenz Prize. In 2001, Said was awarded the Lannan Literary Award for Lifetime Achievement, and in 2002, he received the Prince of Asturias Award for Concord. He was the first U.S. citizen to receive the Sultan Owe Prize for Cultural and Scientific Achievements, 1996-1997. The autobiography Out of Place 1999 was bestowed three awards, the 1999 New Yorker Book Award for Nonfiction, the 2000 Anisfield Wolf Book Award for Nonfiction, and the Morton Dowen Zabel Award in Literature. Topic death and legacy On 25 September 2003, after enduring a 12-year sickness with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, Edward W. Said died, at 67 years of age, in New York City. He was survived by his wife, Mary M. C. Said, his son, Wadi Said, and his daughter, Najla Said. The eulogists included Alexander Cockburn, a mighty and passionate heart, Seamus Dean, a late style of humanism, Christopher Hitchens, a valediction for Edward Said, Tony Jute, the rootless cosmopolitan, Michael Wood on Edward Said, and Tariq Ali, remembering Edward Said, 1935 to 2003. In November 2004, in Palestine, Berzite University renamed their music school the Edward Said National Conservatory of Music. The tributes to Edward Said include books and schools, such as Waiting for the Barbarians. A tribute to Edward W. Said 2008 features essays by Akhil Bilgrami, Rashid Khalidi, and Elias Cowery. Edward Said, The Charisma of Criticism 2010, by Harold Aram Wieser, a critical biography, and Edward Said, A Legacy of Emancipation and Representations 2010, essays by Joseph Massad, Elon Pape, Ella Shohat, Gada Karmi, Noam Chomsky, Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak, and Daniel Berenboim, and the Berenboim Set Academy Berlin was established in 2012. Topic see also Edward Said Bibliography List of Columbia University People Projects Working for Peace Among Arabs and Israelis Z Communications Orientalism Topic References Topic Citations Topic Sources Barsamian, David 2003. Culture and Resistance, Conversations with Edward W. Said. Pluto. ISBN 9780745320010. Cornwell, John 2010. Newman's Unquiet Grave, The Reluctant Saint. Continuum International. ISBN 9781441150242. Joachim Gents, 2009. Orientalism, Occidentalism. Keywords Re-Oriented, Interkultur, European Chinese Intercultural Studies, Vol. 4. Universitätsverlag Göttingen. pp. 41. ISBN 978-3-940344-86-1. Retrieved 18 November 2011. Gazul, Fariel Habori, ed. 2007. Edward Said and Critical Decolonization. American University in Cairo Press. ISBN 978-977-416-087-5. Retrieved 19 November 2011. Edward W. Said was one of the most influential intellectuals in the 20th century. Gray, Richard T., Gross, Ruth V., Goebel, Rolf J., et al., eds. 2005. A Franz Kafka Encyclopedia. Greenwood. ISBN 978-0-313-30375-3. Retrieved 18 November 2011. Iskander, Adil, Rustam, Hakim Edward Said, A Legacy of Emancipation and Representation. University of California Press. ISBN 978-0-520-24546-4. McCarthy, Connor. 2010. The Cambridge Introduction to Edward Said. Cambridge Up. ISBN 9781139491242. Said, Edward W. Orientalism. Knopf Doubleday. 
ISBN 9780394740000 376 Said Edward W. 1996. Peace and Its Discontents: Essays on Palestine in the Middle East Peace Process. Vintage Books. ISBN 9780679766. Said Edward W. 1996. Interviews with Edward W. Said. Up of Mississippi. ISBN 9781578063375 Said Edward W. 1991. In Jones, Lindsay. Encyclopedia of Religion, 2nd edition, 12. Macmillan. pp. 8031-32. <inaudible> Further reading Panyan, Prasad Edward Said and the Question of Subjectivity. New York and London, Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 9781137548. Said, Edward W. 1998. Critical Introduction. Key Contemporary Thinkers. Malden, M. A., Wiley Blackwell, 2000. Connor McCarthy The Cambridge Introduction to Edward Said. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2010. Andrew N. Rubin, Editor, Humanism, Freedom, and the Critic, Edward W. Said and After. Washington, D.C., Georgetown University Press, 2005. Topic. External links The Edward Said Archive Edward Said on IMDb Review of Reflections on Exile and Other Essays and Edward Said, The Last Interview, in Other Voices, Volume 3, No. 1. Works by Edward Said at Open Library Appearances on C-SPAN <laughs>